Hi, this is Gary with MacMOS Now. On today's episode, let's take a look at the modifier keys. So there are four modifier keys on the Mac keyboard. There's Command, Option, Control, and Shift. And each has its own special uses. Let's take a look at each one. So the Command key is usually to either side of the spacebar. And it has a special symbol on the key which is also commonly used in documentation. You also see the word command on it. This key used to be called the Apple key because earlier Mac keyboards used to have an Apple symbol on it as well. Now usually you use command a lot. You use it to modify keys to perform menu functions. Like for instance it's very common to use command Q for quit, command S for save, command C is copy, and command V is paste. And there are other commands that you'll find that are used throughout all sorts of different applications and some applications have their own special ones. If you look in the menu bar at different menu items you'll often see different shortcuts for different commands and you'll see this command symbol there. Now if you're a recent switcher from Windows to Mac you may want to note that Windows uses the control key in the same way that Mac uses the command key. This can be confusing because there's also a control key on the Mac keyboard. But for the most part if you used control key for things like control Q for quit on the Mac you would use the command key. Command Q for quit. So next we have the option key. And the option key has the word option written on it on most modern Mac keyboards. And it also has the word alt. It's because on Windows usually the same key with similar functionality is the Alt key. So if you hear somebody refer to the Alt key on a Mac they mean the Option key. They're one and the same. The Option key also sometimes uses a symbol like this in some documentation. And you can use it for various things. Sometimes it further modifies the Command key. So for instance uh, you might have something that's Command and then a character like Q. And there might also be a Command Option Q. Now you can also use the Option key to modify characters. So for instance if I type Option E you can see I get this little accent mark there and then I can complete it by typing a vowel like let's say I'll type I and you see I have I with that accent mark over it. You can do the same thing in line by simply clicking or pressing I holding down and you'll get a selection here that you can choose from. As a matter of fact you can go into System Preferences and under System Preferences select Language and Text and there under Input Sources turn on the Keyboard and Character Viewer. That gives you this special menu right here that allows you to bring up, you can just barely see it here, show the Character Viewer or the Keyboard Viewer. Let's bring up the Keyboard Viewer and we'll see with this Keyboard Viewer here how if I hold the Option key down, I'm going to press it right now, you can see it changes what keys are available there. So it tells me for instance that the Q key will now give me that symbol. I can get a sigma with option W. And it will do the same for the other keys as well. So for instance I hold down the shift key and you can see the characters there that are represented by shift. And later on we'll be talking about the control key and you can see I get various things. I'm holding down both the option and control here and I can even hold down option, control, and shift and you can see what characters I get that way. So you can see how these modifier keys modify text that you type very easily with the keyboard viewer. So now we have the control key and the interesting thing about the control key is it's nothing like the control key on Windows. That's the command key is similar to the control key on Windows. So it controls its own thing. And you can kind of think of it as the second button or the right click button on Windows. You use it to bring up contextual menus. So for instance here I am in the Finder and I can select this file right here. If I control and click on it I get a contextual menu and you see there's a whole bunch of different things I can do. Depending upon the program you're using and what you're control clicking on it will bring up different things. They're called contextual menus because it depends on the context. In this case it's a file in the Finder. It might be a photo in iPhoto or it might be a clip in iMovie. There's all sorts of different commands, different things that are brought up depending upon what it is you are control clicking on. Using a magic mouse or even an Apple mouse with a right side click or even a secondary click on a trackpad you can do the same thing here. So you can actually do this without the control key. But the easiest way sometimes is to just do a single regular click with the control key held down to bring up this contextual menu. And like with the option key the control key can be used to modify commands. So you may have a 
Command A, and you may have a Control Command A, or even a Control Command Option A. Which brings us to the final modifier key, the Shift key. And this is the most straightforward one, because while you're typing, it simply gives you uppercase letters or the characters above the numbers on the keyboard. But it can also be used to modify commands. So, for instance, you may have something that's Command s and shift command s and it's a different command usually they're related a shift is simply just a shift in the command trying to do it literally sometimes this symbol is used to represent the shift key uh, if you're reading documentation so there's a look at the four modifier keys if you hear somebody refer to modifier keys what modifier keys do i need to use to access this shortcut it's these four keys that they're talking about because simply they don't really do anything on their own Normally on the Mac, if you press one of these keys by itself, it doesn't do anything. You have to then press a character for it to actually perform an action. So I hope you found this look at them useful. Till next time, this is Gary with MacMost Now.